we are in a series called Speak It. Uh, we are in chapter three. This will be eventually a book, I feel. So this is chapter three or, or part three of this message called Speak It. Uh, the subtitle is, it's not about what, it's about what you say, not what you see. Yeah. Ah, okay, so let's do a quick review. Uh, up to date, we, we start off with 2 Corinthians 4.13. 2 Corinthians 4.13. Now, church, uh, when we say read, that means we read. Amen. Say, say neighbor. We're going to read. I thought, okay, let's read. Yet we have the same spirit of faith as he had who wrote in Scripture, I believe, therefore I spoke we also believe, therefore we also speak. Say, neighbor, we have the same spirit of faith as those who wrote the book. So, okay, Holy Spirit, I'll go there. What is your life writing? These individuals in the book wrote a story with their life. All you're reading is their life story. So the question is, what's your life story? If someone read your life, would they see faith? Selah. That means pause and calmly think about it for a second. <laughs> Everyone say, I got it. And then now we also learn from Hebrews 11.3. By faith, now see y'all not reading. <laughs> see that, see that, y'all already, y'all <laughs> tighten up, say, say neighbor, see that, you, you already, everyone say, by faith, that is, with the inherent trust and enduring confidence in the power, wisdom, and goodness of God, we understand that the worlds, the universe, the ages were framed and created and formed and put in order and equipped for the intended purpose by the word of God so that what is seen was not made out of things which are visible. I gave you all this revelation a couple of days ago, uh, but I want you all to get it. There are no visible words. It's not deep. You only see the word that has been written. But words are actually what? Invisible. So when he's saying that what was formed was formed by what you could not see because you cannot see a word, you can only see a written word. You can hear it, but you cannot. Oh, I know. Some of y'all thinking, wait a second. He right. <laughs> Then Jesus said, now, if y'all have not been here the last couple of weeks, you had to go, go, go to Facebook or YouTube and catch up. John 14 and 12, Jesus told us this. Everyone, are y'all ready? I assure you and most solemnly say to you, anyone who believes in me as Savior will also do the things that I do, and he will do even greater things than these in extent and outreach, because I am going to the Father. Jesus says, I authorize and I deputize you to flow like I flow. I want you to step in and start to do like I did. Jesus. Now you have to have a certain level of boldness to do this. You have to be fully persuaded. Glory to God. <laughs> Then Matthew 21, 21, look what Jesus tells us to do. He said, Jesus replied to them. Now notice, wait a second. You notice how he keeps saying, I assure you? Because he knows that you're not going to be sure. <laughs> so he, he keeps saying, I assure you. I, he keeps trying to remind you of who you are. Y'all ready? Jesus replied to them, I assure you, and most solemnly say to you, if you have the faith, personal trust, confidence in me, 
and do not doubt or allow yourself to be drawn in two different directions, you will not only do what was done to the fig tree, but even you say to this mountain, be taken up and thrown in the sea, it will happen if, 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 God's will. Last week, we saw that Elijah spoke to the wind, the clouds, and said, listen, and this is First Kings 17. He says, this is so good. Y'all ready to read church? Now Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the settlers of Gilead, said to Ahab, Ahab is the king, as the Lord of God is lives before whom I stand, there shall be neither dew nor rain these years except by, he didn't say God's word. What's he, who he, who, who does he think he is? He's exactly what God called us to be. He says, nothing's happening until I say so. God. Now, this is pre-Jesus coming. Huh. Make it one of things to make it go, hmm. So, 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 let's walk it down. We know that Adam named the animals. Y'all got that? Uh, we, we know that Adam named Eve. Okay. Uh, we know from last week that he says, I want you to speak to the rain, the wind. We also know that he said, uh, he says you can speak to the fig tree, and he says you can speak to the mountain. So what I'm trying to do is I go through the series, I'm trying to build a collection of things you can speak to. And by the time I'm done, <laughs> you're going to be speaking to everything. <laughs> but the goal is that I have to show you in the book that there's nothing that God has put outside of our ability to move. Ooh. Today, 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 uh, we're going to be talking about a man named Ezekiel. Ooh, the Valley of Dry Bones. Now, say, say, neighbor, say, say, neighbor, buckle up. God gave him some fresh manna. Ooh, ooh, it was like Golden Corral this morning. It came straight down from heaven. It was like the outback, you know that outback bread when it come out, oh my God, and that butter, Lord Jesus, or that, or that cheesecake bread when it come out. Come on, and you say, man, take back the white bread. I want more of the brown bread. Come on. You know they have half, they have half and half, and, and that one, no, man, I want, praise the Lord. Is, is it the honey butter? The honey butter, praise the Lord. So. So Ezekiel, a prophet, this is what he does. Chapter 37, he says an amazing thing. Verse 1, the hand of the Lord was upon me. If you go to chapter 1, it's the same thing he said, the hand of the Lord is upon me. And he brought me out in the spirit of the Lord, and he set me in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He caused me to pass, he, 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 he caused me, he allowed it, he, he took me to this spot, uh, passed all around them, and behold, there were very many human bones and open valley, and they were very dry. Oh my God, Holy Spirit, help me. So, he's taken me to a dead zone. He's taken to me to a, a place with no life. He's taking me to a place of no hope. This is kind of like where Mephibosheth was in Lodabar. He's taking me to a place where I don't have no optimism. I can't see my way out. And he placed me in the midst of a place where there is no possibility. Now, why would the God of possibility put me in a place with impossibility? Must be God wants to show me something. Because why would he take me to a place with dry bones? God can take me anywhere, but why would he take me? here. Uh, what he's trying to show us, he's, he's saying, son, 
I want you to know what's on the inside of you. I, I want to know what I made you to do. I, I want you to know what I put on the inside of you. And sometimes God allows us to go through some dry seasons because he's trying to show us what's on the inside of us. Sometimes God allows us to go through some pain and some suffering, some tears, just so you understand, I'll never leave you, nor forsake you. I'm an ever-present help in a time of trouble. And sometimes you don't know what you have till you hit rock bottom. He says, the bones are very dry, meaning there was no thought or possibility that this situation can change. Whew. Boy, Holy Spirit, don't let me forget what you're telling me right now, please. Verse 3, and he said to me, son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, oh Lord God, you know. You, you, you know you're scared when you have no answer. Huh? <laughs> Lord, you know. Uh, the question is put to the prophet in order to emphasize human possibility. Uh, Matthew 19, 26 reads this. It says, but Jesus looked at them and said, with people, as far as it depends on them, it's impossible. But with God, all things are possible. Now, let me give you some subtext. Let me, let me set it up right. Ezekiel had gone through a season of failure that God allowed. So now that he's in a spot that God asked him a question, he is so gun shy because he has failed. See what happens in life, y'all, when you're young and you're spry and your body work right and you feel good about yourself and you didn't have no bad relationships, you believe the world is beautiful. <laughs> come on, come. Y'all remember the time when you thought that everything is good. But the longer you live, you meet some nasty people. You, you, meet, you go through some things and your perspective changes. And before you know it, you become a little jaded because, you know what? I never thought someone would do me like this. So what happens, you start to get back up off of people because you don't really know what's possible and, and people have now showed you that not everybody that says, Lord, Lord. <laughs> so a lot, Ezekiel, God is asking him to step into being who he called him to be, but he has some post-traumatic stress syndrome. He had been through some stuff that now God says to be who I called you to be, but Lord, you don't remember what happened to me. Ezekiel 3.26. Look at this, y'all. Look what God did. Y'all ready to read? And I will make your tongue stick to the roof of your mouth so that you cannot talk and you cannot be a man who rebukes people, for they are a rebellious house. God shut his mouth. So now God asks you to talk. I don't, I don't know if I want to talk. <laughs> and sometimes God allows us to go through some things. And now you have to go through rehab. For those of us who have been injured, breaking those scar tissues, reworking and rewiring your mind and your brain and your body to, 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 to do what it used to do. I've seen some never get back to where they were because the rehab process was so challenging. They just stay in a state where they have been debilitated. And so imagine God says, I'm going to make you a mute. And you know, God said, you're not going to stop this. Verse 27, look at this. But, everyone say but. but. When I speak with you, I open your mouth. And you will say to them, thus saith the Lord. 
He who hears, let him hear, and he who refuses to hear, let him refuse. For you are rebellious. Now imagine this, y'all. You've been talking and doing what God does, and all of a sudden God shuts you down. And sometimes, sometimes in your life, you were going along living your life, and something shuts you down. Something hurts you. Something sets you back. And you stop believing like you used to believe. You stop dreaming like you believe. Because, see, something happened to us. And if, if I talk to every single one of you in here, you can tell me the day, the time, and the hour when that thing shifted your life. And I'm telling you today, you got to reawaken that dream, that thing that God put on the inside of you. Listen to this, old things passed away. Behold, all things are new, and God is trying to do a new thing. So he's saying to Ezekiel, son of God, son, hear me. I know what you've been through. But I'm trying to light your fire again. I want you to be what I've called. I know what you've been through because sometimes in our faith walk, we think that God didn't know what you've been through. Like God was surprised by what he allowed to happen. Everything is Romans 8, 28, 8 says, and we know that all these things are working together for good. Those who love God and those who are called according to his purpose. His design, his plan. All right, so now you got the pretext what happened to him. He's a prophet who was told to shut up. You know how frustrating it is when you want to say something, you can't say something? Imagine, imagine you go a time in your life when you want to say something to somebody, huh? You want to tell them how you really feel, huh? And you can't talk. So what happens People started to make fun of him. People started to laugh at him. The prophet who can't talk. And so, like anyone else that's normal, you start to just what? And so now God says, son, I want you to speak. I don't know if I want to speak. That didn't work out too well for me. (laughs) Back in Ezekiel 37. He said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, oh, dry bones, hear the word of God. The word prophesy, as you dig in, it means this. Oh, speak on God's behalf. (laughs) Speak like God said it. (laughs) Speak that word as if God is speaking to it. So he's saying, son, speak to the dry bone. So the question I must ask you right now, my brothers and sisters, what dry bones should you be talking to? What dead situation should you be talking to? What situation have you lost your hope on you should be talking to? (laughs) Verse 5, thus Say, notice he didn't say I said. <laughs> the Lord said for me to say. <laughs> Thus said the Lord, God to these bones, behold, I will make you, I will make breath enter you so that you may come to life. That word breath also means wind, spirit. <sighs> I will make you come to life. Come on, come on, come on. <sighs> now, ooh. Psalms 104 and 30 reads, you send out your spirit and they are created. You renew the face of the ground. Uh Uh-oh, there it is. You renew the what? So what is God showing him? Holy Spirit, here it go. How did God create man? With his word, no, what was the substance he used? Dirt. So what is he saying? I'm going to show you how I created man, and I'm going to make you the cook. (laughs) Golly. Because man was created with dirt. So what was the valley filled with? 
dry dirt. He says, I had to wait for the dirt to be right so I can use that dirt to recreate what I did in the garden. The same material then is the same material now. But I want to show you how I did it. Golly. Back in Ezekiel 37, 6, watch what it says. I will put sinews on you, make flesh grow back on you, cover you with skin, I will put breath in you so that you may come alive and you will know. Isn't this what happened in the garden? (laughs) Glory to God. Now, the process is twofold. The first process is the reconfiguration of the uh, the skeleton structure, the sinew, the skin, all the other things. But then he, he needed more. He had to put breath in him. Verse 7 says this. Then the Lord formed this created. No, this is Genesis now, okay? Because I want to give you exactly how he did Genesis to connect the dot. Let's read it. Then the Lord God formed, that is, he created the body of the man from what? (laughs) And he breathed in his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living being. Individual, complete. So notice, Ezekiel... God was taking him back to the lab and saying, son, this is how I do it, and I want to show you to do like I did. Golly, Jesus. All right, Ezekiel 37, 7. So I prophesied and I commanded, and as I prophesied, there was a what? Everyone say noise. <laughs> And behold, a rattling, and the bones came together and bone to its bone. Come on, the hip bone connected to the elbow. Come on. And, and, and things started to. <laughs> and I looked, and behold, there were sinews on the bones, flesh grew, and the skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. So, at his voice, Everything started to move. Man. John 5, 28, look what it reads here. Do, don't, do not be surprised at this, for a time has come when all those who are in the tombs will hear. 1 Corinthians 15, 52. Everyone said, in a moment, in a twinkle of the eye, at the sound of the last trumpet call, for the trumpet will sound, and the dead who are believing in Christ will be raised imperishable, and we will be completely changed, wonderfully transformed. This is the heavy water today. Genesis 1, 24. In the beginning, look. Then God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures. Wait, wait. Who brought the living creatures? So the, the creatures were made with what? Mm. According to, limited to, consistent with their kind, livestock, crawling things, and wild animals and earth, according to their kinds. And it was so because he spoken them into. Okay, verse 9, Ezekiel 37, 9. He said to me, prophesy to the breath, son of man, and say the breath, thus saith the Lord, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these slain, and they will Now, what happens, the Valley of Dry Bones were soldiers who had died in battle. So the the, the people thought that since all the soldiers are gone, we cannot win the battle. So now he's speaking to the dry bones, those soldiers in battle. Look what it says right here in Ezekiel 17. This is before. This is what happened in the battle. And all the best warriors will be killed in battle, and those who survive will be scattered to the four winds, then I will, then you will know that I've spoken. Notice, go back, Gina, go back. I want, I want y'all to see this connection. Look what it says. Then he said, prophesy the breath, the son of man, that, and say to the breath, thus says the Lord, come from where? The wind that took him? <laughs> the same wind It, it, 
Now, if y'all don't pay attention, you're going to miss it, okay? If you don't pay attention, you're going to be like, I don't, I don't, I don't know who he's talking about. The wind scattered them, and the same wind could bring them back. Verse 10, so I prophesied and he, as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they came to life and stood on their feet, an exceedingly great army. The army that was scattered is back. Then he said to me, son of man, <laughs> these bones are whole of the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, our bones are dried up, our hope is lost, we were completely cut off. Therefore, verse 12, therefore prophesy and say to them, thus said the Lord, behold, I will open up your graves and make you come up out of your graves, my people, and I will bring you back to the home, the land of Israel. Verse 13, then you will know with confidence that I am the Lord when I have opened their graves and made them come out of their graves, my people. Here it is, verse 14. I will put my spirit in you and you will come alive and I will place you in your own land. Then you will know that the Lord has spoken and fulfilled it. Now, now let me help somebody. Some of us have lost some people we really care about. And this word encouraged me so much that God's going to speak a, day, a word one day. <laughs> and, and it will feel as it was no time. Now, Pastor, what do you mean by that? The Bible says one day for God is a thousand years for us. If you do the math, it means if you lost someone in this season, it will feel like no time when you see them. Jesus <laughs> I wanted to sit down and do the math for you, but I don't feel like doing all that math. <laughs> because there's an equation, because if one day for God is a thousand day, a thousand for us, and we know, so then you can work the math out and realize it may feel like seconds or minutes when you see your loved one. <laughs> Thank you, Holy Spirit. <sighs> so the question I must ask you, my brothers and sisters, what dead things have you stopped speaking over? What mountains have you stopped speaking to? Because what happens in this faith walk, we get tired. And Galatians chapter 6 says, do not get weary in well-doing, for in due season you shall reap what you've sown if you faint not. You know, I, as I thought about this story, I thought about I don't know if you've ever been to the circus before, and you will see huge elephants, and they'll have a rope on the elephant's leg. And some would wonder, why would the elephant stay with a rope on its leg? Well, the trick of it all is, when the baby elephant came out, they put a chain on his leg. So what happens, the elephant could not move because he was chained. But as he grew, he stopped trying to move because he had been so conditioned that he cannot move. And before you know it, he's a full-grown elephant with a small rope, not even a chain anymore because he's been so conditioned that he can't do it. And if you're not careful, you allow life to condition you to stop trying. You allow situations to condition you to which you stop trying because you know what? It didn't work last time. So why should I keep trying it didn't work last time. The Bible says a righteous man falls down seven times, but he gets back. You know, sometimes we feel as if God is, is pressing us too hard. There was a story about a little boy, and he, 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 he saw a caterpillar uh, fighting to get out of its cocoon. And the little boy got a little, little scissors, and he started to cut the cocoon. And, and, the cater and, and the caterpillar came out and just shriveled up after a while and died. And someone said to him, don't you understand that the cocoon has a purpose? He said, I didn't know that. He said, well, what happens is in the process of the butterfly trying to get out, he is working his wings. 
and the process of him fighting to get out of his cocoon is strengthening and it's allowing blood to go into his wings. So what people thought were trying to hold him back was really trying to make him fly. And sometimes in your life, what you thought was trying to hurt you was really trying to strengthen you. See, the goal of God is for you to have the strength to step in and walk in your call. But oftentimes, God allows you to go through seasons of trials and tribulations. Hear me, adversity was never made to break you. Adversity was made to make you. So God will use those trying seasons because he's trying to strengthen your wings, believer. There's times when you go through storms and you ask God, why? Why do so much pain? Why do I have to go through this, God? Not realizing, as Paul said, Lord, I've asked you three times to remove this thorn from my side, but my grace is sufficient. For in your weakness, my strength is made. Some of y'all know when I, when I was a teenager, I worked at a place called Discovery Zone. The Discovery Zone was like Chuck E. Cheese on steroids. Yeah, it was in Germantown, Maryland, and I was, a, I was a kid coach. As a kid coach, part of my job was to play with the kids in the tubes. They had tubes and balls, and you climb like, you know, in the balls and play with the kids, and then you'd have to go get the pizza, slice it, take it to the table for the party, and bring Coke out. But the also part of the job was this. You had to go on the PA system and announce the party. I was a poor reader, and they had a little girl named Susie, and Susie was a great reader. Now, she wasn't a good employee, but she could read better than me, huh? I was the best kid coach, but I was a poor reader. So imagine if you can't read well, and you have a girl who goes before you to announce her party, and it sounds like this. Hey, little Johnny, it's a great day at Discovery Zone. I'm happy for you. You're 10 years old. Can all of the participants go to little Johnny's birthday party? We have pizza and Coke ready for you. Yay! I get up on the thing. Hey, 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 John. Um, yeah. Um, let, let, your pot, the room ready. You know, because when you can't read, you skip words. Come on. If you, you know, when you can't read, you just got to be jumping. Just, just, you paraphrase. Come on. Anybody had a child? You, 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 you. The, the room ready. So the manager came and said, Jomo, you got to do better than that. You know, you, you, you 16 years old. When they put in, so I just talked to, to, to Susie. I said, Susie, every time my party come up, just, just, just speak for me, and uh, I'll clean your room up. You know, you know how you do side deals. You know, I'll go clean your room. You just announce my party for me. And so today, I speak. As a poor reader, I speak. As a poor reader, I write. Because oftentimes, what God has called you to will often take you to places that you're not comfortable. Because what God wants you to understand, it was never about your ability. It was all about your availability. And God can use anybody at any time. So I stand here today, <laughs> never thinking, poor reading Jomo would be speaking to you. God says, I use the simple things to confound the wise. So people are shocked to see me today. But see, I met a man and his name was Jesus. <laughs> and the word says, I can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens me. <laughs> you may not have it all together, you may not know everything, but with God, all things are possible. John 14 and 6 says, for I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. Romans 3.23 says, for all have sinned 
and all have fallen short of glory. <laughs> Romans said, nice, if you believe in your heart and confess your mouth, you shall be saved. There's been some things in your life that you've allowed to stop you and block you. There's been some things that happened to you that have limited you. I want you to speak to that situation, whatever it is, the thing you should have did that you've allowed some failures or some setbacks to hold you back. I need you to open your mouth and start talking that thing again. I ask you today, do you know him? Do you know Jesus, your Lord and Savior? If not, there's no greater day than today to make him your Lord and Savior. I know some will say, well, Pastor, I'm not, I don't have my life together exactly. Well, let me get my life together. You won't. <laughs> That's why we need Jesus, because we can't do it. But if you want something different, you got to do something different. Some of you here today are in a backsliding condition. You know what to do, but you don't do what you know. If you want something different, you have to do something different. Change begins with you. Some of you are looking for a home church. I am not a perfect man. I'm not a perfect pastor. I'm under construction just like you. But God gave me a little revelation and I tried to share it with y'all. So there's no perfection here. But we serve a perfect God who helps in perfect people. And if you want something different, do something different. With all eyes closed, all heads bowed, I want to come into agreement with somebody today. If that's you and this word was for you, just lift your hands in the air. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Church, repeat after me. Father God, I thank you for your son Jesus who died for me and rose for me. Lord, as Paul told Timothy, stir up the gift that's on the inside of you. Lord, stir me up. Stir me up, Lord. Remind me of my dreams. Remind me of my goals. Lord, I believe. Holy Spirit, come into my life. Guide me. Lead me. Fill me. Jesus, I surrender my will. I surrender my way. I make you Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Give God a shout of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.